Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory and our next installment of It's All Up From Here, getting started in high power rocketry. So as you can see, we now have all the parts I ordered from Mad Cow are in, plus some parts that I've gone and picked up at the store, which would have seen in our intro here. So what we have from Mad Cow, if we go through all the parts real quick, I have a 38 millimeter motor tube, a uh, three inch plastic nose cone, my three inch tube with my fin slots pre-cut in it. I bought it that way from them, had them custom cut those in. It cost me a couple dollars to have that added, but it's well worth it in my opinion. I also have our fin stock here. So we'll actually use these sheets to cut the three fins we need out of. I think we can actually get them all out of one sheet, but I've got two sheets just because I always like to have extra fin sheet around. I also have the three centering rings for uh, uh, this rocket's name is Infinity for Infinity right here. And then I've got some rail buttons I've ordered. I always recommend when you're ordering things like rail buttons, you do them with your friends because I just always have oodles of rail buttons because I build lots of rockets. But you don't need tons of them, you just need two. I've got some bolts I picked up here at the local hardware store. Uh, these are 832 by 1 inch. I'll be using these as part of my motor retention. Another part of that will be these two L brackets, I'll cut um, each of them in half and they'll serve as part of that. We'll see that in a later video when we get to motor retention. I've also got four T-nuts here, also 832 because both my motor retention and my rail buttons are 832 bolts. So two of these are for my rail buttons. The other two are for motor retention and we'll actually have to drill two holes in my rearmost centering ring and we'll actually drill another hole in my forward centering ring for this little guy. This eye bolt is where I'm differing from what most people will do with a level one. Uh, a lot of the times what people like to do is they just take the shot cord, which I've got quite a bit of bright green, well nice dark green shot cord here, and they'll actually um, glue it between their centering rings and the motor mount tube. And I'm not a huge fan of that because if you burn your shot cord while uh, you Kato on the pad or anything and it cuts your shot cord, you're done. You can't fix the rocket where with an eye bolt and a quick link, I can always change out the shot cord to something else. So I will be using an eye bolt. I've also got some washers and extra nuts for that. But that is all of the parts used to build a level one class rocket and what we will be using to build infinity here. So what we're going to do is go into drilling all the holes and getting everything prepped. So one of those I'll have to shorten this eye bolt, drill all the holes in my centering rings. Guys, so rail buttons are a really hard thing and before we do anything on this tube we need to mark where the rail buttons go. Usually we would start this process also for marking where our fin slots are going to go but those are already cut so we don't have to deal with it. But we need to mark a straight line between two of the fin slots for where our rail buttons will lie, both top and bottom down here. Shouldn't so, it be halfway between the two fin slots? It will be. But to do that, we're going to kind of roughly guesstimate, which is what I've always done. Just kind of halfway is roughly right there, which I know, it's not great. Stop cringing behind the camera. And then to actually get a straight line, you use a door frame or a hard flat surface. Come around on this side of me. Okay. And I can actually get in here and draw a line. Pencil is like the best thing to do this with because I used Sharpie on my level one and then tried to paint my rocket a light color and then the Sharpie came through <laughs> on the paint. Yeah, and an easy way to check if you got it right, and I'm just going to take a tape measure inch and five eighths and I'm like roughly inch and five eighths to the exact same point. So I know that when I measured it that this side of the line over here, this, this side here is inch and five eighths, this side is off so I always want to drill on this side of the line and I'm going to denote that by just drawing a little arrow. And it's just a simple way to remember that, yeah, your line was a little bit off, but you were really close, so that's how you remember it. But from there, then we know that we need 
our next rail button a certain distance up. It has to be above where your fin slot ends. My fin Did, slots. Do you want to go over to the table for this? Half an inch. Yeah, we'll go back to the table. <laughs> I'll be over here. So if we come come down here. No. Get in close. So when we're down here, we know that the fin that this point needs to be above where our fin slot is. The fin slot's half an inch above the bottom. It's a little more than that. They ended up cutting it about five eighths. So I'm going to put my bottom set fin slot about an inch to, I'm actually going to go with inch and a quarter up. And so, of course that's not wanting to work for me right now. So lock the tape measure, go inch and a quarter up, and that marks where I want it. Now, I've gone in through Roxim, and I've determined where my CG is on the rocket. And so I know that the CG is a certain distance down and our forward centering needs to be in front of the CG. So in order to make sure that we are in fact in the right spot, I have, um, well, I took the dry CG, which put me at um, 16. 16 inches, which is here. And I can put my forward centering ring, or my forward um, rail button right there at 16 inches. And you're saying, well, it needs to be in front of the CG, but that's where my CG is when it's dry. Thing is, the moment you throw a motor in it, your wet CG pulls the CG back a couple inches, usually inch to inch and a half back, and then you're well in front of it. And the smaller this distance is between your two um, rail buttons, you will actually have more time getting off the rail for your rocket to achieve aerodynamic flight. So it helps you overall. Yeah, that one. All right, guys, so the other thing we have to do when we're doing all of this is mark our centering rings. I think I'm in shot, yep. Mark the centering rings. So I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. I know their size. Well, I can do this properly. So let's, let's go ahead and do this properly. The easiest way to find your center line is to go two inch spread. Mark that. Mark one inch. What you laughing at, punk? We just never were this exact when we did it on. <laughs> I know. And then I know my distance between the two, and that marks my motor retention. I kind of eyeballed that center. <laughs> yeah. But still. This, the small dimensions, it's okay. Yeah. And then we're going to do the same thing again for my forward centering ring, which we really don't need to because I only need it on one side. So we're you just going to. You still need it to be centered on the one side. Yeah. So we're just, that's still pretty close. And so what we'll do is we're going to drill three holes, one here and here on the aft, and one here on the forward for this guy, and we'll shorten this guy down. So let's get going. All right, so now we're going to drill the two holes I need for my um, rail buttons. So I've got marked where they go, and I know where I need to drill. A little bit of wander is not the end of the world here, but we're really trying for none. So start with the aft If you guys notice, there's two lines. Uh, he had to go redraw his line after I gave him crap for it. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> my, my line. All right, so one of the other things you have to do before you're really getting into any of the assembly is you need to make sure all your parts actually fit. So you've got to take them and actually try and slide them on, and some won't slide on very far, which is a problem. You want them to be a decent fit, but you don't want them to be loose or overly tight like this is right here. This one's going to be a bit of a pain to get back on or get back off because it wanted to go on so well. And you can take 
sandpaper to it. My preferred method is to use my Dremel. Huh, that's an iron sticker. I didn't even realize that. That's another thing. Sometimes you don't always get what you thought you ordered. Because that centering ring is way thicker than the other ones. But what we're going to start with is taking our Dremel tool and cleaning up the inside. Once we have the insides cleaned up to where they fit, we will start testing the outside on our main body tube. So let's go on that. And so all I'm doing for these is one very light pass around the inside and then they fit perfectly. That's all that's needed. And then they just slide right on. And that's the type of fit you want right there. A little bit of wiggle overall, but it's a good fit. You won't have epoxy leaking through. And that's what we want on all of those. Now, the next part much harder but we're gonna actually have to test fit all of these inside the body tube here sometimes this can be more easily done using um, sandpaper than it is with the drummer all right and so all I'm doing to get the outside to fit is just running these on some sandpaper on the outside and I'm actually just have a sanding block here rather than sandpaper itself but the method of sanding doesn't matter as much as the fact that you are sanding and I'm tired of getting cut by some of these so we're gonna gently deburr a little bit of an edge that was made when we just did the interiors here but I'm gonna go back to my exteriors and so you're just going around like this for a while and every so often you take your body tube and you slip it in there and check and this I would argue I actually got this one it binds a little bit if I get it at the wrong angle but I don't know maybe maybe we're close yeah, I'm going to argue we're good there. So that's all it takes is just going until you can sit here and, well, slide it in and out of the tube without it binding. And then you've got your three centering rings ready to go. And the only thing we really have left to do is to cut our fins. And that will be the next video you guys will see. So one more real quick thing before I leave you here. Your workbench is going to end up looking like this whenever you're working with fiberglass. And it's real easy to end up just spreading this into the air and then you inhale it. And that's really bad for you. But the easiest way to clean up fiberglass dust on your workbench is a wet paper towel. And you come in and the wet paper towel traps the fiberglass dust up in it. And then you can clean off your entire workbench with a wet paper towel and it keeps all of the fiberglass particles from becoming aerosolized and then I always like to then take one more wet paper towel that's clean wipe it down and finish it off with a dry paper towel but just like that you were able to clean up your entire fiberglass mess and you didn't end up inhaling any of it Alright, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing and take a look at me on Facebook and on my website linked in the description below. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll be sure to get back to you and answer them. And I may even answer them in an upcoming video. So, thanks guys.